The only place to grab one of these official shirts is ProWrestlingTees.com slash 616 Entertainment. There's a million of them. Check them out. This video is also brought to you in part by the Patreon producers, without whom content like this would not be possible. In 2010, mixed martial arts was booming. All-time greats Anderson Silva and George St. Pierre were in their absolute prime, turning away all challengers to their thrones more often than not in spectacular fashion. Former WWE superstar Brock Lesnar won the UFC Heavyweight Championship, and with his arrival came an injection of attitude the likes of which the very real world of mixed martial arts had never seen. But MMA wasn't monopolized by the Ultimate Fighting Championship, no sir. The California-based Strike Force were running events on Showtime and even CBS, showcasing the likes of Fedor Emelianenko and Brett Rogers to an audience of over 5.4 million viewers. Dream, a Japanese promotion born from the ashes of Pride FC, were drawing a crowd of nearly 50,000 to the Saitama Super Arena. The business of mixed martial arts was exploding on television, on pay-per-view, and for the first time in forever, in the digital realm of video games. The worldwide industry leader, the UFC, had made its home console debut on the Sega Dreamcast in late 2000, and developer Anchor Inc. continued to pump out sequels on the PlayStation 2 and Xbox for the next several years to come. This game engine was even recycled for Pride FC's 2003 PlayStation 2 game. This would all come to an end in 2004 on the back of UFC Sudden Impact. In five video game releases across a four year window, very little had been done to improve the existing foundation, which wasn't anything to write home about in the first place, if I could be so blunt. Five years would come and go without a single mixed martial arts video game hitting the market. Which is nothing compared to the state of modern boxing video games. Link in description. This deafening silence would be shattered with the release of UFC 2009 Undisputed, the first UFC video game developed by Ukes, famous for their multitude of WWE offerings. Undisputed was, without a doubt, the new blueprint. This was the first MMA game that actually got it, and if you don't know what I mean by that, let me explain. The early UFC titles, and the Pride game by extension, were arcadey, casual, pick up and play representations of a largely ignored, fledgling sport. Nothing was taken seriously or presented accurately, there wasn't even an attempt. Heavyweights could battle lightweights without anyone batting an eyelash, it was pure anarchy. UFC 2009, though, offered a simulation-based experience. If you wanted to mount your opponent and rain down heavy strikes, you had to shoot a takedown and carefully progress your top position from the guard, all while defending the threat of submissions or sweeps from the bottom. Commentators Mike Goldberg and Joe Rogan would detail each and every move, educating casuals on what exactly they were witnessing. You got to half guard. A minute into round number two. And now he's in side control. Oh, he's mounted him! UFC 2009 wasn't perfect by any means, don't get me wrong, but it represented evolution. MMA fans finally had a video game that actually resembled their favorite sport, rather than a rock'em sock'em punch-a-mania that felt more like ready-to-rumble boxing than it did Fight Night. And speaking of Fight Night, when would EA Sports step into the cage? As I stated at the top, in 2010, MMA was growing exponentially, and being the biggest sports dev team out there, you'd have to imagine that EA had their eyes on such a hot commodity, right? And while the UFC were exclusively aligned with THQ and Ukes, their aforementioned competitors, both Strikeforce and Dream, were wide open. EA Sports MMA was announced in 2009, and on the spot, UFC President Dana White declared war, going as far as to state that any UFC fighter who signed their likeness over to EA Sports would be blacklisted by the promotion for life. Which was funny, seeing as though UFC Hall of Famer Randy Couture, who would headline the upcoming UFC pay-per-view event, would be featured on EA MMA's cover art. 
This is already juicy, but trust me, this is only the beginning. We've got a ton to cover here today. This is the life and death of EA Sports MMA. What's up Dan Dans? My name is Ian. Thank you for tuning into a video that I've wanted to make for a long time. My connection to EA Sports MMA runs very, very deep and nobody talks about this game. So maybe I'm about to tap into a community that hasn't seen any love in a long time. I have many stories to tell regarding this game and today I'm going to share them all with you. I'll sprinkle them in between the coverage of the game's production and the critique of the final product. Now without any further ado, let's get to it. There's no better place to start than the very beginning, right? So who the hell made this game? You're thinking, it's EA Sports MMA, you moron. EA Sports made it. Listen, pal, EA Sports is the big umbrella. There are several huge development teams underneath that umbrella. It's not the same people making Madden, NHL, FIFA, UFC, and F1 every year. How the hell do you think they'd cram all that into 365 days? EA Tiburon, one of the teams underneath the EA Sports umbrella, are the ones responsible for EA MMA. They're also the Madden team to this very day. Hell, it was EA Tiburon who gave us NFL Street 1, 2, and 3. And Superman Returns, the final Superman video game ever developed, all the way back in 2006. How's that for a little trivia? What the hell was I talking about? Oh yeah, EA Sports MMA. Electronic Arts are elite in the video game industry. It goes without saying, right? EA are big enough that they have the exclusive rights to all simulation-based NFL video games. Madden is the king of the castle, whether you like it or not. EA had Tiger Woods, Rory McIlroy, they even have the top-of-the-line hockey franchise out there. Take-Two Interactive shut down their NHL 2K series back in 2010. Even 2K Sports were like, you know what, never mind, just take hockey, we're done. EA's dominance in the sports scene begs the question, how is it that back in 2007, the UFC wound up signing with THQ? We know nowadays EA UFC is the premier MMA video game on the market, so why didn't this relationship blossom at the start of MMA's boom period? It's a funny story, actually. According to UFC president Dana White, he approached EA Sports when he first began his video game crusade. That five-year MMA video game drought, Dana wasn't taking it laying down. He knew his company was big money, and he wanted a major partner to help put together a video game that would do justice to the biggest MMA promotion in the world. EA Sports shut him down, and they shut him down hard. At the UFC 100 press conference in July of 2009, Shortly after the announcement of EA Sports MMA, White told the media, I've been in the trenches for almost 10 years, and I've been dealing with all these businesses, and EA was one of them. EA Sports told us, you're not a real sport. We wouldn't touch this thing. We want nothing to do with this. We put our asses on the line, THQ and the UFC, to make a video game deal in the worst economy in the world. We go out there and do this thing, and it's successful, and now fucking EA Sports wants to do a video game. Really? That's not what you told us a year and a half ago. The tirade continued, but I think you get the point. UFC 2009 Undisputed was a hit. He's right about that. Across the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, the game sold over 2 million units and reviewed well. The decision had been made, the contract had been signed, and now the fight was on. But the question on everyone's mind wasn't whether or not EA actually spit in Dana White's face. The question was, could EA Sports hold their own in the cage? As a massive MMA fan, I was dying to get my hands on UFC 2009 ahead of its release. When I tell you I was having dreams about it, I'm not kidding. I remember walking into a 7-Eleven and right there behind the counter, the dude had a demo unit of Undisputed set up, and I was able to play it right then and there. Now obviously this wasn't real, it was a dream, but that's how badly I wanted to get my hands on that game. And EA MMA, for me, was exactly the same. I was beyond intrigued by the concept of two MMA video games on the market at the same time, dueling it out for supremacy. Competition breeds innovation, 
and I found myself wondering what EA was going to do to try to one-up the UFC. The first trailer for EA Sports MMA was shown in November of 2009. Not on an E3 stage, not on a video game showcase event, no. It aired on CBS as a part of the Strike Force Fedor vs. Rogers event. The trailer pitted the two heavyweight competitors against each other in the digital realm right before their main event showdown. The in-game models were impressive, the animations were smooth, and my personal hype level skyrocketed. I wanted to play as the legendary Fedor Emelianenko, who, if you're not an MMA fan, damn. Fedor was like the MMA Mike Tyson when he was in his prime. And I don't mean he was an incredibly skilled boxer, I mean he was just a war monster. Knockout power? Check. Extremely high level grappling skills? Check. An untouchable, practically scary aura surrounding him? Check. Fedor was called the Last Emperor for a reason, man. And that's when my wheels really started to turn. Sure. Playing as Fedor would be cool, but could I beat Fedor? God, I remember thinking, I need this game right here, right now. Let's skip the slow trickle of information leading up to release and jump straight into the big stuff. EA MMA's roster filled out in a big, big way. International stars like Fabricio Verdum, Shinya Aoki, Jacare Souza, Gegard Mousasi, and more lended major hardcore credibility. Former UFC stars like Henato Babalu Sobral, Dan Henderson, Andre Arlovsky, and Nick Diaz caught the eyes of the modern fans. Legendary fighters like Boss Rutan, Ken Shamrock, and Hickson Gracie held down the nostalgia front, and right on the cover, holy hell, Fedor Emelianenko and Randy the Natural Couture who was actively signed to the UFC. How the hell was Randy able to appear in EA MMA? Well, he never signed his likeness rights over to the UFC, which prohibited him from appearing in their video games, but he didn't like the UFC's specifics when it came to likeness rights. But when EA Sports knocked on Randy's door and waved that Madden money around, well, now you've got a UFC Hall of Famer as your EA Sports MMA cover star. And again, if you're not an MMA fan, Fedor and Couture squaring off on the cover art here was huge. In 2008, when Randy was the UFC heavyweight champion, he campaigned for the UFC to sign Fedor, with the goal being a mega main event showdown. For several reasons, it never happened. So Randy did what anyone would do. This fight meant so much to him and his legacy that he retired from the UFC in an attempt to break his contract so that he could go sign with a promotion who would reach an agreement with Fedor. Couture versus Fedor had to happen. But that's not really how contracts work, so this caused a massive lawsuit between Couture and the UFC, and the super fight never happened. EA Sports MMA positioned itself as the only way to live out the dream showdown, which, in my mind, is brilliant. I mean, it worked on me. So, we've gotten this far, we've set the scene. What does EA MMA's gameplay look like? What does it feel like? I figure instead of trying to describe it to you, why don't I just show it to you? There's nowhere near. Wow, that punch has got to hurt. Champion is stunned! Souza takes him down to the canvas with a double leg takedown. That's Wrestling 101. Waller has a real power on earth. Is he still standing? That was a massive blow. Down he goes. Zoranskis tracks him on the head with a side kick. Zappi is about to stop the fight. What a big time. What a TKO. Yeah, it's good. Look, one of my favorite aspects of EA MMA was the inclusion of very real danger. Very real one-shot knockout power. If you overextend yourself and get caught with a power shot on the chin, you're done, pal. That's it. You don't get to scramble and try to get it together. No, you're out cold just like that. I loved this. And don't get it twisted, it's not always one and done. It's actually pretty rare, and scrambling to regain your bearings after getting caught and rocked is much more common. 
But just take a look at these animations, man. Listen to the impact of some of this ground and pound. Denied on the overhand. via TKO, and here we thought we were just getting started. In this respect, EA Sports MMA put UFC Undisputed to shame. Seriously. On the submission front, EA went out of their way to avoid the much maligned submission control system of their competitor. UFC Undisputed introduced the shine mechanic, where in order to apply submissions, a player was forced to rotate the right stick as fast as humanly possible for upwards of 30 seconds to a minute. Players complained of broken controllers and even blisters on their palms due to this control scheme. EA Sports opted instead for a simplified system, one button. You press one button to initiate a submission, and if your opponent doesn't block it in time, the fight is on. In this second stage, you once again need just one button to battle back and forth. It's one part rhythm based and one part cat and mouse. You want to string together as many presses as possible without interruption from your opponent while also managing your stamina meter. It's simple, it's effective, and the x-ray feature here is awesome. Chokes are handled differently. In a choke submission, you want to use the right stick to find and chase the sweet spot, which is hidden from you until you find it. If this sounds familiar to you even though you've never played EA MMA, it's because in 2012, UFC Undisputed 3 would straight up steal this mechanic. I did kind of launch into knockouts and submissions without talking about the striking controls, didn't I? Alright, let's circle back. If there's anything that turned off many players who gave EA Sports MMA a shot, it was the striking controls. UFC Undisputed mapped your limbs to the face buttons, much like your favorite fighters of the past. EA MMA mapped your punches and kicks to the right analog stick. Flicking diagonally up throws a simple jab. Flicking diagonally forward throws a cross. A counterclockwise quarter circle from 3 o'clock to 12 o'clock threw a right hook whereas a clockwise circle from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock throws a left hook. Holding down the R1 button aims whatever strike you're throwing at the body, and holding L2 switches your attack from a punch to a kick. If this sounds extremely complicated, ugh, it's because it is. It is when you hear it explained, at least. I would argue that when you have the controller in your hand, it's not as hard to figure out as it sounds, but my argument doesn't matter in the long run, and here's why. This striking system straight up killed EA MMA for many players. It was too hard, and they were out. Game sucks! I disagree strongly, but it is what it is. The real head scratcher is this. EA allows you to go into the options menu and simply switch over to a face button control scheme for striking. This tells me that they internally weren't entirely sold on their own control scheme. If you really believe in your controls, believe in them. Don't allow a secondary simplified option for people who don't want to take the time to learn the proper mechanics. If your control scheme is too complicated for the average player and you know it, Throw it out entirely. The ability to switch your striking controls over to the face buttons was a major, major problem, and here's why. It completely broke the online scene. If your strikes were tied to the face buttons, you could throw punches so, so much faster than people like me who use the default stick-based system. There was an epidemic in the EA MMA online community centered around body spammers. Body spammers were players who would switch their striking controls over to the face buttons, and right at the start of the fight they would blitz forward, throwing hook after hook after hook at their opponent's midsection, which would completely deplete their stamina and health bars in the blink of an eye. And if you use the default stick-based striking system, you were practically defenseless to this. This sucked. And if you're watching this and you were a body spammer back in the day, you still suck. 
you completely ruined the fun of fighting online, and you drove people away from a community that was already small to begin with. Fuck you. I dipped into a negative aspect of the game there for a second, so let's turn it around and put over one of EA MMA's greatest strengths. It's presentation. Fighters walk down the ramp on their way to the cage or ring. More on that in a second. Moro Ronaldo and Frank Shamrock provide excellent commentary for your fights. For many years, it was the fight everyone wanted to see. Well, now it is happening right here, right now. The matchup between two MMA legends, Randy the Natural Couture and the Last Emperor, Fedor Emelianenko. He has his back, and really, he has so many options from here. Of course, option number one is usually that rear naked choke. Uh oh, he's given up his back, and this could be the beginning of the end. Just a bad position, Marlo. He's got to get hand control immediately, and he's got to turn and face his opponent. Jimmy Lennon Jr. gives us the pre- and post-fight announcements. We've got real-world brands like Rockstar Energy and even Showtime on the mat. And you know me. As a belt mark, you bet your ass I appreciate the appearance of several different championship belts. Now, why are there several different championship belts? Well, that's simple because there are several different promotions you can fight for. Look, this isn't called Strike Force 2010 or whatever the hell else they could have called it. This isn't a one promotion deal. Strike Force, the number two MMA promotion in the world, is indeed present, and that's fantastic, but we've also got a generic version of Dream, Japan's biggest promotion at the time. My favorite part of this is that Dream's fights didn't take place in a cage but in a ring. Let me tell you how much variety this adds, Dan Dams. My goodness. Bouncing between a cage and a ring is great, but how about the different rule sets? See, Strike Force doesn't allow elbows on the ground. The unified rules do allow elbows on the ground, so if you want to mount your opponent and rain down elbows, you gotta take your fight to someone else's cage. Maybe an independent promotion, right? And hey, maybe they don't fight in the Strike Force style hexagon cage. Maybe this indie league uses a circular cage. Japanese MMA rules don't allow grounded elbows, but they do allow soccer kicks to the head and stomps to the face. This level of creativity and variety for every fight you play spices things up in a way I can't even put into words. By the way, not a single UFC video game to this day has allowed for this level of creativity. Not one. And I've got more to gush over. EA Sports put so much love into their presentation that they made sure every fighter has their own stance. In real life, Chuck Liddell and Shogun Hua don't hold the exact same stance and style. Well, in the UFC game, they do. With EA MMA, the developers stated that the players would be able to identify which stance belonged to which fighter, even if it were applied to a generic model. For hardcore combat sports fans like me, this was a dream come true. The fights themselves feel different from the competition, as well. UFC Undisputed's clock runs in double time, like you're playing NFL Blitz or something. EA MMA's clock is real time, brother. If you're in a championship fight and you're more of a point fighter, you don't have that knockout power or slick submission game, you better be ready to battle for 25 minutes into a decision, because this is a very real 25 minutes. That may be a little too real for some, but not me. Sign me up for the big time. Emelianenko with a soccer kick to the head! A career mode is important for any combat sports game, and in my opinion there is only one combat sports game ever made with an absolutely perfect career mode. It's called Fight Night Round 4. Your manager approaches you with a list of opponents. One guy might have a losing record. He's not even ranked. The next guy is climbing up the ranks just like you are. He's working on his record and it's a good challenge. Another dude might be like 22 and 3. He's coming off a loss in a title fight. He's way out of your league. But man, if you could just land that one good shot, all of a sudden, you're a contender. It could be worth the risk. There might not be a single guy you're approached with that you're willing to sign up against. And you don't have to. Just wait for a new batch of opponents. 
You might fall in the ranks and your popularity will suffer, but you can get that back, right? So, does EA MMA stand up to Fight Night Round 4's arguably perfect career mode? In one word, no. Look, here's the deal. We've got Boss Rutten as our coach. He's fully, and very nicely, I might add, voice acted, and he guides us through the cutthroat world of mixed martial arts. He uses his connections to earn us opportunities to train in Thai boxing gyms across the world, or maybe Randy Couture's gym to work on our wrestling. The options here are extremely impressive, and I'd say the same about our career progression. We start off in a podunk little indie promotion, and after stringing a few impressive wins together, a mid-tier league will reach out and offer a contract. At this point, we can head to Brazil and fight in a ring under Valetudo rules, or sign with a UK-based operation, which adheres to the unified rule set. Making a name for yourself here opens up the big time, and contracts from the dream clone Mystic as well as Strike Force will slide across our desk. Have I used the word variety enough in this retrospective? Goodness gracious. At this point, you're probably wondering where this goes wrong. I stated right at the top that this career mode doesn't stand up to Fight Night Round 4, and here's why. It's the same place where all of the other career modes fall apart. The matchmaking. A duo of completely nonsensical booking and unrealistic rematches drag down an otherwise great gameplay mode. There is absolutely zero reason why I should be rematching a guy with a losing record in just my fourth pro fight. I fought him. I finished him decisively. And the very next fight I'm offered is him again. Why do I have to create storylines in my head to make up for this terrible booking? Oh yeah, he argued that the ref stopped the fight too soon, so they booked a rematch. Yeah, it's personal this time. Why do I have to do that? This, coupled with taking on the same guys sometimes five to six times across your career, completely pull you out of the otherwise very positive experience. If you know me, you know I am notoriously a single player guy. I so, so rarely jump into a game's online modes. But I'm also a big time trophy hunter. I made the trophy list for Retromania Wrestling. Let me tell you, I knocked it out of the park. EA MMA's trophy list required a player to level all the way up online. And when I tell you that this took ages, man, it's hard to put into words what a long and arduous journey this was. But let me set the scene. I'll do my best. First of all, I wasn't alone in this endeavor. I mention him all the time, but my good buddy Bathroom Money Tim Ewers was also in pursuit of this elusive, elusive platinum trophy. It was a different time. It was 2010. It was before full-time jobs, before mortgages, before kids. It was two guys hanging out, staying up all hours of the night, both on our own separate PS3s hooked up to our own separate TVs, drinking fatal amounts of sugary sodas, and in Tim's case, chain-smoking cigarettes between fights. I swear to God, he'd keep a cigarette in his mouth for an entire round because he didn't have time to set it into the ashtray. It was an incredible sight to see. We'd spend all night fighting anybody we were matched up against online. Sometimes you'd have a bottom-of-the-barrel body spammer to deal with. Other times you'd have a back-and-forth battle with somebody at your same skill level. And every here and there, you get matched up with somebody like Serdov, who finished as one of the best EA MMA players in the world. A guy who is still on my friends list to this day, because we used to get together to have practice fights. And no, I never beat him. Imagine this going on forever. Or, I mean, it felt like forever. White belt, green belt, on and on and on. And after you earned your red belt and you thought you were done, no sir, you just earned the ability to compete in the Masters Division. Rinse and repeat those nights of Mountain Dew Code Red, cigarettes, and no sleep for months and months on end. It sounds silly now. This comment section could easily fill up with, you guys sound like losers, but let me tell you something, man. I think I can count on my hands how many times I've had that much fun. And the story doesn't end there. This isn't just a, hey, what a good time, tale. No. 
Tim and I were active on the EA MMA message boards, which were frequently visited by the actual developers of the game. We'd get on there and bust balls saying, do you have any idea how long it takes to level up in this game? We want double XP, damn it. And guess what? We'd get a response back. You got it. Double XP starts tonight and runs through the weekend. We were blown away. This was 2010. Who the hell had this kind of access to the developers of the games they were playing back then? This was unheard of, at least to us. So what did we do? We went out, we bought a bunch of garbage to eat, and we marathoned our way through a weekend of double XP. It was tremendous. There is a bittersweet ending to this story, but I'll get to that in just a little bit. Let's put a pin in the Platinum Trophy Chase for a second so I can tell you about the unbelievably forgotten EA Sports live broadcast feature. In short, this was a live event taking place exclusively inside of EA MMA, hosted by the developers of the game. Real players from around the world were selected to compete in front of the entire community, and before the bell rang, they would literally get on camera and cut a promo. This was out of control. It feels like a fever dream looking back on it now. I never had the chance to compete, but man, watching someone talk smack like they were The Rock, only to get completely dominated and knocked out cold inside of 60 seconds, it was a one-of-a-kind thing, Dan Dans. If all this sounds great so far and you're thinking, man, I can't believe I missed out on this whole thing. I want to check this game out. I need to see for myself what makes EA MMA so special? Why wasn't anybody talking about this game? Why did none of my friends say, hey dude, you need to check out EA MMA? There's a quick and easy answer to that question, unfortunately. Nobody bought EA Sports MMA. The game reviewed very well, pulling higher scores than UFC Undisputed 2010 on some outlet scales. The game was showcased on CBS, on pay-per-view, it had the EA Sports marketing juggernaut behind it, but it didn't matter. Remember at the very top of this video when I mentioned that UFC 2009 sold over 2 million copies and set the world on fire? Hell, that game was the catalyst for EA MMA even existing in the first place, so you know it was a big deal. Get ready for this. EA Sports MMA, in its first month on the market, sold 45,000 units. 45,000. Doug Crutes of Cohen & Company labeled EA MMA as dead on arrival, which are three words you never want to hear in regards to a brand new IP. I was shocked to see how poorly EA MMA was selling, but I mean, I should have seen the writing on the wall. On those nights that Tim and I were grinding out the levels online, we were running into the same players over and over and over again. We knew some of them by name. Tim would turn to me and say, oh, I got Camaro Z28 again. I'm going to kill him again. The player base was small, very small. So small that the servers, which hosted all of the game's online functionality, were shut down less than two years after the game's launch. Remember that bittersweet ending I mentioned regarding the journey to the Platinum Trophy? I remember reading the message board post informing all of us hardcores that the EA MMA plug was getting pulled. There were posts from players and developers going back and forth, and I'll never forget reading the words. From now until our final day of operation, April 13th, 2012, we're instituting 10 times XP. Go and get those Platinums. It was like he was speaking directly to Tim and I. We had badgered this poor guy for a year, busting balls about this ridiculously long grinding process, and obviously, it made an impact on him. He knew we wouldn't have time to see the journey to its end, so he stepped in and made a difference. He made it possible for us. That is something I'll truly never forget. If you're watching this video, dude, thank you. That was a big deal to us. And that EA MMA Platinum Trophy, which I earned on October 1st, 2011, 
is still the rarest trophy in my collection of nearly 7,000. Thanks to online databases like psnprofiles.com, it's cataloged forever that I was just the 20th person in the world to earn that trophy. 0.1% of all players have this one in their collection, and with the servers having been shut down for nearly 10 years now, this is an extremely exclusive club that is no longer joinable. God damn, what a journey. EA Sports MMA, at the end of the day, was a commercial failure. The game sold very, very poorly. It reviewed well, and to the hardcores out there, like myself, it's still held in high regard. I'll never forget standing in line at GameStop at midnight. There were maybe 35, 40 people lined all the way out onto the sidewalk to pick up their pre-order of Fallout New Vegas. There were stacks behind the counter of PS3 and 360 copies of New Vegas. You'd walk up to the cashier, they'd reach out for your pre-order receipt while asking, 360 or PS3? You got your game and went home looking forward to a brand new adventure in the war-torn, post-apocalyptic world of Fallout. When it was my turn at the counter, the cashier asked, PS3 or 360? I replied, EA MMA. Behind the skyscraper-esque towers of Fallout, there sat my lone PlayStation 3 copy of EA Sports MMA. I grabbed my game and went home, looking forward to a brand new adventure in the Strike Force Cage, the Japanese Ring, and the high-octane world of mixed martial arts. It is worth noting that in December of 2010, two months after EA MMA's abysmal launch, EA Sports Associate Editor Jeff Ecker confirmed to Figure 4 Online, and I quote, There is definitely going to be an EA Sports MMA 2. In some ways, this was a lie. In others, it wasn't. On June 17th, 2014, MMA gamers were treated to the release of EA Sports UFC. And after all that talk, after declaring war on EA Sports in 2009 and threatening to blacklist any UFC fighter who signed over their likeness, UFC President Dana White was included as a playable fighter in EA Sports UFC 3, forever proving that time and lots of money heals all wounds. Oh my goodness gracious, Dan Dans, there it is. The life and death of EA Sports MMA. You know, there are very few games out there that I can say I was there on day one and I stood on the deck of that ship saluting the skies as we sank down to the abyss. EA Sports MMA holds a very special place for me and this is a retrospective that I've wanted to make for a long, long time. Thank you very much for watching and if you love this video and you love content like this, feel free to head over to patreon.com slash 616 entertainment and sign up at any level you choose. You don't have to, but if you want to, it doesn't piss me off. Until next time, I love ya, and I will see you soon.